So I want to talk about my trip to the States. Yeah. A little more in detail, not just about the laundromat yeah. um, and why I actually went and what I found. So I went to North Carolina. I had picked North Carolina after probably about a year of due diligence. Um, I'd been to quite a few of the other states. And there was a mixture of factors for me that don't necessarily just have to do with like economics. It was also kind of a political standpoint, like a multiculturalism, like a lot of those items. And so that's how we came to North. I say we, one of my business partners and I, he's also intending to be down there. Is it because you were kind of trend reading those things and, and how, you know, political, socioeconomic immigration, how that relates to value or that was just more kind of like personal where you'd want to invest? Personal, honestly, okay. personal. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't everything about just the investment because if it, purely on the investment basis, Texas and Florida would scream actually. Mm -hmm. Like they just, there's the opportunity to get in with stuff that's cheap. You can build for ultra cheap. There's insane demand. Like crazy. things are turning over. Like it's just, it's craziness. I've never been to Texas either. I got to go there too. Yeah. It's a, it's interesting. It, for me, it was, uh, it was an eye opener. Open carry scares the shit out of me. I'm not going to lie to you. Like when you're in Superstore and Buddy's just got like a gat strapped to his hip no and you're like, way. do you need that to get your apples? I don't think you do, but. Crazy. Yeah. That's like, so weird. I, and they were everywhere. They were ever like everyone had them walking around. I walked around. I had, when I went hunting, I went hunting while I was down there and I had an assault rifle hanging off my neck and I'm walking through the gas station. Nobody says anything. Weird. Like a, like we're talking like a three and a half foot tall, <laughs> big ass gun. And I'm just walking around and people are like, eh, he's just hunting. That's cool. I'm like, okay. Crazy. Crazy. Um, anyway. Anyways, an aside, but yeah, so we landed on North Carolina and on the, on the economic side of things, which I'll, which I'll focus on it. It's having a lot of growth. There's a, there's a West to East coast migration taking place in the States for a multitude of reasons. The biggest and kind of most prominent obvious one is California is like having a ton of issues with taxes and a lot of rules and they're having a bunch of different um, they're having water issues. There's just a ton of different items like that that are stacking up. Yeah. And so it started with, I feel like it started with a lot of high profile names being like kind of making the move to places like Vegas, Texas, Florida. Like um, big company names? Big company name. No, I think more like even just like famous names. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who are like, I have, I'm a big business guy. I'm in California, but I'm tired of this crap. I'm going here. Mm -hmm. And so then they make the move and then another few follow in their footsteps. And and then it kind of followed, the biz, their businesses kind of follow too, right? Because instead yep. of having, like if I own the company and I'm headquartered in California, I live there. Now I live in Texas. Good chance I'm moving my headquarters to Texas, right? Mm -hmm. And so that that started taking place a few years ago. And it's just been amplifying and amplifying and amplifying. And then COVID doubled down everything. So then because of the density in California, they had crazy numbers. It right. pushed things. Same with New York. Due to the density and, I guess, ineffectiveness in shutting things down, crazy numbers, mass exodus out of New York as well. And people moving south, staying east mostly, but also then moving south because probably a little bit better weather mm -hmm. and a little bit more spread out. And Those are also two of the most expensive markets in the world. And then on top of I can't of it, imagine that didn't have any role. Well, exactly. Well. And then yeah. the unaffordability became another item. So all those things played into it. So you're having these growth periods in these different places. I don't know what the stats are for Texas and Florida, but I know for North Carolina, like where we where we were looking, it was about 20% year over year average growth across the state yes, uh, for wow. prices. Okay. So very similar to Halifax on that yeah. front. And they've had that for about two years. And when I even wow. first started shopping there, the per door cost has probably gone about 50%. From when Five, we, zero. Yeah. 50. From about a year and a half ago when we first looked at a multi-units there. So- is there is there some concern that that the horse has left the barn? Like what's... Uh, so, yeah, a little bit, yeah. and and I feel like I'm a little late to the game in general. But I'm the thing is I see the growth, and it's a similar thing to what I'm saying with with Halifax, where the snowballs kind of started going, and it's not a this amount of momentum. You can't just stop here. We can if we don't actually start freaking building some stuff. But anyways, yeah, if that momentum can't stop because what's happened now is you see the big companies like Apple. Google's, so those guys are setting headquarters up in those states. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Like, what's what drives the economy in, in North Carolina? I'm not well-versed in... Yeah, so they're, they're a very... I'd say they're a mixed, mixed economy. Um, they have a ton of universities in both cities. True. Uh, they have the yep. sports teams. Then they have a lot of tech uh, that's that's coming there as well. Okay. That's providing a lot of high-paying jobs. Like, Apple said they're going to hire... I forget how many thousands of people down there at an average of 130K US, which is like 180K Canadian. And it was right. like an absurd number. Like, when they hire, it's like... Okay, yeah, yeah. hiring 10,000 people. Good jobs that you wouldn't think are, are going to go anywhere uh, anytime quickly. What's what, like, population-wise? Like, what's what kind of population is there? So, I'll pull that up, actually, because I forget now. But Charlotte's a bigger city. Charlotte was, I think, over... Let's see here. 
I should have got my numbers before we get on here. But well, uh, I was just kind of curious to, to kind of scale it to what we're used to. And, yeah, so and Charlotte, Charlotte's 860,000. Well, that's eerily. I mean, Halifax proper is, you know, around there. Yeah, but I was going to say it's growing. I think it's closer to a million now. That was of 2019, and they were having like a massive amount of influx, and then Raleigh's around half a million. Hmm. Now, it feels different, though, because their cities are so spread, like insanely spread out. Right, like the sprawl. It's not like here where huge urban well, sprawl. Yeah. They don't have high density. Our downtown here in Halifax feels way more intense than either of theirs. Really, big time. I picture it as like a little cute little downtown. Y- yeah, it like is. Very, it's, it's very yeah. quaint. Um, yeah. Very. I was gonna say <laughs> hipster. Neil's like, let me just put this big ass building right here. <laughs> <laughs> Massive tower. No, it's it, it's very quaint. It's very. I'm, I'm gonna say hipster. Honestly, like it's. Yeah. It's very nice. There's a lot of older buildings that were there from when they used to do manufacturing that have been right. converted oh, over. Those are sweet. I love those. They look great. So yeah. much brick. That's the part that mm. made my life. Everything's brick. Looks great. The weirdest and thing. And like the good brick, not the painted black brick. Like the good. Yeah, the big clay red oh, ones. Those and are so nice. They're kind of rough and stuff. Like they don't look all perfectly the same. Yeah. And they look amazing. The houses look so good. Every house. Every single yeah, house is brick. Yeah, and it's I just. Nice. Makes me so happy. Anyways. The weirdest thing, though, in the downtown areas is they do have big buildings. They still have some 30s and 40s. The first, like, five to six floors, and I mentioned this in my video. The above-ground parking. It's all above-ground parking. Weird. Like, whenever you go to a site, the first five floors are parking. Someone asked a question about this when I was showing the site, and they're asking, like, well, how does that, you know, front-to-back slope affect the ability to build and is, does it create some problems and so on and so forth. Then it can actually be advantageous because when you're, you're putting underground parking, you can actually kind of dig into the slope and yeah. it spares you some excavation. But here, our, our planning is very nuanced and very focused on the pedestrian experience, right? So when the pedestrian walks down the street, how do they experience this building beside them? And the idea, like four stories of above ground parking, like they, people would lose their mind here. Yeah. They'd be like, that's so cold. We want nice little shops on the main level, <laughs> parking underground or no parking at all. Right. So that is crazy that they do that much above ground parking. I saw the buildings. It looked kind of weird as someone who doesn't see those. It does look kind of weird. They do make a bit of an effort to make the pedestrian experience not bad. It's like you don't feel, I didn't really notice that at first until I got to our hotel and then we like drove up and up and up. And I was like, wait a second. And then I started looking around. I was like, everyone's like this. And there was a brand new building being built. And they didn't do any excavation. There was like there was like one uh, level of excavation. Slab on grade. Yeah, it was like slab on grade, <laughs> Crazy. 40 stories, let's go. Man, that's so and wild. Yeah, yeah. It was their their culture, though, in general, I think the American culture, correct me if I'm wrong, somebody, I'm sure we'll get some corrections here, but it is very uh, built around the automobile and transportation. Right. Like right. every city has a lot of sprawl. Yeah. Highways and interstates are everywhere. Par- tons of surface parking. I mean, the other, roads are wide. Yeah. Like, I, I'm curious if other than just the sheer cost, like my site works just to dig the hole is going to be about 500 grand, half yeah. a million bucks for one building, you know, just to dig it down. It's not absurd and, though. I mean, it's not absurd, but it's a lot of money. It is, sorry, a lot of money. It's yeah. moving dirt around yeah. for half a million bucks. Yeah. I wonder if that's the rationale. Is it cost or is it soil composition or is there like an underground uh, transit system? No, that was my thing. There was no underground transit system. Like I, that's the part that didn't make any sense to me. And you look at like New York, I believe they have underground parking. Yeah. I'm trying to think about it. And they have a ton of underground transit yeah, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. I don't, I couldn't, I, for the life of me, I didn't, I probably should look it up, but for the life of me, I was like, hmm. I don't really see why other than cost, yeah. but I feel like the cost of having to go up an extra five stories. No, nah, man, that's. You don't think it's going to outweigh or impact on that? I wouldn't think so. Once you get going with the concrete, you're just yeah. going. The forms I guess. are the forms. I guess. Um, interesting. But they have, but they also did it on 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 low mid rise buildings. Hmm. Like they'd have one or two. Yeah, stories maybe of something parking. geotechnical. Why, why they have to do that? But potentially, it is a weird. Um, it's a different look. But this is the nuance of different areas. But yeah. so, actually, let, let's just cut cut to the punchline. Yeah. Is there anything that you're going to buy down there? Yeah. Really? Yeah. This is actually news to me. We didn't talk about this no. because you were late as always. Yeah. So okay, so we haven't actually secured our first building. I'm so excited. But because, yeah, I, it's going to be neat. It's We are definitely going. Like, we're now actively pursuing. We know what we want to be, where we want to be, uh, what we're looking for. We're willing to go in both Charlotte and Raleigh. What We're going to start with a smaller building and get basically our feet wet with the management. Smaller and what, what scale? 20 units. 20 units and same model, renovate. Yeah. Okay. So now here's um, here's where the biggest difference is, is the cost per door to renovate. Our cost per door, I'd say, in Halifax to renovate properly top to bottom, on average, we're spending around, I'd say, 45, 45 a door, honestly. I, I said 35 to 40, but yeah. Yeah. 
And if you like, once you get all your exteriors done and you get yeah. some landscaping, it really gets to that. Your main systems, you know. Yeah. So down there, and that's what that's what us GCing it. That's mm-hmm. not a GC yeah. company. If you add a GC company right. in there to the handle the whole 10. project, like a general contractor where you just have one person, one party you report to, probably add an extra 10K a door. So you're looking at 50 to 60 a door to have a, a company handle it here for you. There, we met with, with general contractors. They were saying for everything, all new kitchens, all new floors, all new bathrooms, granite countertops, drywall, like paint to trim, the whole shebang, 15 a door. Man. Paying one GC. He said, he said mm-hmm. high side 18, but 15. I, we talked about this. I watch so much of that HGTV stuff. Like I can't help myself. I love it. This is actually how I kind of got into real estate. I watch it. I'm like, why do I keep watching these shows? I love them. Selling but, Sunset? <laughs> not selling sunset. Well, <laughs> that's not bad. I watched that too. Um, but I was what? really into these flipping shows. Yeah. And occasionally they would like zoom in accidentally. Mm. And like the workmanship was a little like, <laughs> right? Like good yeah. from far, far from good. Uh, but I also couldn't believe some of the prices. And this was when I was barely in in the Getting industry. In the yeah. Right. And they'd be like, bathroom, three grand. And I'm like, what the tub's around like, <laughs> kitchen all in with you know 10 grand it's like man these are really 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 cheap and it's because their labor is so cheap and and, and the materials cheap too but um i couldn't get over it. i'd be interested to see the quality yeah because I, I don't then ex- like and we sold it for a million dollars i'm like your baseboards don't line up man <laughs> like you butted them you didn't miter like it's it's anyway yeah that's, I'll be curious to see how it goes too. This this GC we met with, he had a couple hundred staff and they were doing, mm. he think he was turning over around 600 units a year. So I imagine he's not doing the worst job in the world. No. Um, I mean, he's he's obviously hitting what the market down there supports. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's, you know, it's funny is at that size, like he's small. Like that's, that is, that is nothing. Like there is. This is so interesting because you're saying their population is the same or smaller than our population. Well, no, but that, that, well, we're talking a city here. So Charlotte's a million. We're talking, you're talking versus a province of a million. Yeah, I know. But like our, uh, that, that, that's true. That's true. And they're having influx of like, I think it was like 2,600. Yeah, right? but they're getting like 25,000 people a quarter, if not more than that. Really? Per, per city. Damn. Per city. It's like. That is a major influx of people. It's, when things move down there, it's much more aggressive. Like that's, and this is where I'm interested. Again, the risk is much higher too, because you can have that outflux just as fast. Mm-hmm. But people make their moves really, really fast. And so, yeah, so there, there's a lot of, you think he said there was 30,000 units going up in Raleigh or 20,000, 20 or 30,000 units brand new being built in Raleigh right now, mm. right? So like they, they have big numbers on everything they touch. Talk to me price per door. So price per door, old inventory, it was around 100 a door when I first started looking. Looks like I'm not getting in for under 150 a door. Hmm. It's just a little aggressive, a little aggressive, but he was kind of saying like around 150 a door, you sink in your 18 to 20 grand, so you're going to do it for 170 a door. They're reappraising around 240 a door. So it's not bad. Yep. The other thing is down there you sell. You don't hold on to them. You sell and move up because you can roll forward. You don't mm-hmm. get capital gains tax. You can roll it forward in 1031. This is, and this is why I want to, this is why. Yeah.